G'day guys, Todd here from The Perfect Line. I'm here today at Perfect Line HQ with Frank, the tank. He's having a good old nap. Coming to you with our first vlog. Just want to give you a bit more insight into um, how we work, how we came to be, and why we do what we do. So yeah, a little bit incapacitated at the moment. Had a bit of a crash on the mountain bike. Rolling, not super steep shoot, but a little bit greasy. Unfortunately, a little bit too much front brake to try and make the turn at the bottom. Front wheel drifted out over the bars and full weight of my body straight onto the shoulder, onto the ground. It's got a bit of a crack in it at the moment. So I'm in a sling, probably off the bike for six to eight weeks. Yeah, sucks. How mountain biking goes, had a pretty good run. About four years, I think, since my last injury. Um, broken elbow. Before that, I also did my collarbone. Four years of some very close calls and I'm pretty well surprised by the way. Quite a few crashes. Life of a mountain biker. Goes back quite a few years. Sort of started mountain biking when I was sort of 12 or 13. Lived at the bottom of the Port Hills here in Christchurch. So super handy to the mountain bike trails. Um, me and some high school friends, some pretty basic bikes. The Downhill Nationals, they came to town. Pretty awesome event to watch. This would have been like 2002, somewhere around there. Uh, watched some guys riding pretty darn fast. So anyway, that kind of got me into it a bit. Jumped forward a few years. Uh, living in a flat at the time. We got some new flatmates from Canada, Ian and Brandon. We all became really good friends. Having some beers one night, Brandon sort of like mentioned that he had traveled all of New Zealand, but he'd never traveled his own country. And I was like, well, hey man, maybe I should come to Canada and we should travel Canada. Six months later, I was in Vancouver, uh, found a flat, good mates with them. Uh, we bought a Toyota Corolla, like a 91, 92 sedan, proceeded to drive across the country. So over the course of like, Two and a half months, we drove from Vancouver um, all the way to the most, get this right, east point of North America, uh, St. John's in Newfoundland. And then we drove down to New York City. At 7 a.m. in the morning, we drove into New York City, drove around, checked out all the sites. And at 2 a.m. we left and decided we'd drive all the way back to Vancouver. So anyway, across that whole trip, had a point and shoot camera. Brenner had one as well. Took a bunch of photos, videos, just of all the good times we're having. Moved into a new flat with a couple of friends that I'd met from the last place, Ryan and Brad. So Brad was actually professionally shooting videos. I kind of got a little bit intrigued. He showed me some of the editing processes. And I thought, hey, I can, I can maybe do some of the stuff with the videos that I've shot from my trip across Canada. Um, so I proceeded to download Adobe Premiere. Um, and it's pretty fun cutting it up. It came out with maybe an hour long video. Got all our buddies around on my last night in Canada, had some beers and proceeded to watch the whole video. Everyone loved it, thought it was hilarious. And that kind of kick-started my video making. Got back to New Zealand, moved into a, another flat, a high school friends, the new flatmate, Reese. Then Reese became good mates. Between me, Reese, and another friend, Isaac, we got right into mountain biking again. Reese is a bit of a oh. kind of daredevil guy. He had a Kona, a pretty basic Kona, and he just sent it off everything. No helmet. Took me and Isaac like a month to convince Reese to buy a full face helmet. Prefer to wear his baseball cap. Don't know how he didn't hurt himself. And that's what really, you know, got me into mountain biking again, like really properly. You know, I went out and got a new bike, got a GT Ruckus, uh, long travel, free ride hardtail. Having good times, taking photos, videos. I started chucking these edits up on YouTube, Pink Bike. No. A lot of people were commenting how they enjoyed watching the stuff and I enjoyed making it. The process of like, I'm out there, I'm doing it, I'm having fun and I'm in the interim capturing all this, like the good times that we're having. Got back from Canada, got back into mountain biking, um, but didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I actually went to NatCo to study web development. So that's uh, it's creating dynamic websites, all the programming behind it. Qualified as a web developer, that led into the next thing. Man, we just love mountain biking and filming, so I wanted to combine all three. But what I wanted to make is a website that people could go to and find new trails to ride. You know, if you hadn't been to a region before, but you didn't just want like just how long the trail was. You wanted to like see a GoPro video and like photos of like what the actual trail was like. How did it ride? Was it bumpy? Was the jumps and all that sort of stuff? And that's where the perfect line came about. So we're actually say one of, if not the first, YouTube channel to be doing point of view videos. 
Um, now these were shot like 10 years ago. Um, some of these were shot, uh, Reese actually essentially came up with probably the first GoPro. We took that Canon point and shoot um, that I had in Canada. He built a foam mount, a bit of foam cut out to fit it, glued to the top of the helmet, and we sent him down the hill and came out with some pretty sweet shots. And this was, this is like a year at least before I got the GoPro HD. Um, and we're already doing this out on the mountain bike trails, capturing their shots. The problem was though, like GoPros back then, super bouncy footage, pretty hard to watch. Didn't matter what you did with the editing, it just never looked really that great. Uh, so it was really hard to get a really good feeling for the trails. Um, so I actually met Agatha at a concert one night after skiing, it turns out she was a skier. Got her into mountain biking. Got the Port Hills for the first time, probably into something stupid that a newbie mountain biker shouldn't be riding, but she got the hang of it pretty quickly. Really into it, loves it. She's had heaps of bikes now. Yeah, pretty well impressive. Particularly when you haven't started as a young kid doing it, you know, she's a, a grown adult jumping onto a mountain bike for the first time. Absolutely pushing her limits, um, right to the point where she took six months off work, um, went to Europe and raced the Downhill World Cup Series. Um, so she did that as a privateer, all on her own back, from her own money. A little bit of support from sponsors, but not very much. She just really wanted to not go out and win, but like prove to herself that she could go out and accomplish something that's much greater than what a lot of people want to aspire to, but never actually like live out their goals. So she went and actually, I'm going to do that. It's because we absolutely love mountain biking and skiing and we want to share it with you guys. We love the creative process of filmmaking and photography, playing with the geeky gear, the cameras, the drones, the cable cams, um, getting those technical shots, getting up early, suffering at the time, but seeing the end result, getting it edited, getting it together, telling that story in a creative way um, to showcase it to you guys so that hopefully you get stoked out, you want to go for a ride in that location, um, maybe you haven't been there before so you don't know the trails so you can jump on board on our Thursday trail series check out the new trail before you head there is it you uh, is it something you can aspire to to ride later we just really want to get you like frothing on mountain biking and skiing um, and that's why we're here future episodes we're going to talk about the kind of gear that we use got the things like g'day Frank Frank's a little bit upset there he's not too amused by this sort of video Blog things, he'd rather be out riding and running. GoPro 7, absolutely loving this. Um, particularly with the new Hyper Smooth, it's really like gimbal like. Um, yeah, pretty unreal for this small device. Um, what else have we got down here? We've got the Mavic 2 Pro. Um, this thing is amazing. Small camera on board here, but man, you wouldn't know it in the photos and videos that you can get from it. Other thing we're working on at the moment, which you probably, you might have seen the backstory on, is our little saga with the uh, cable cam. Um, this isn't the cable cam, but it is the remote for it. Um, so good news, the cable cam has arrived. Um, it's up and running. Um, needs a little bit of modification, but the results so far are ace. Like, next level. Great quality, flying the GH5 on it. Um, so from Panasonic. So the other thing we're working on is a Canterbury mountain bike film. Some absolutely awesome riding here in Canterbury Christchurch. Um, so you've got the Port Hills, Victoria Park, Christchurch Adventure Park, open 365 days a year, longest chairlift, tons of trails, tons of new trails being built out in the Canterbury foothills. So you've got Craigieburn, Mount Cheeseman, heaps of rad trails up there. You've got Mount Hart bike park. So tons of riding there, thanks to Bike Methan, Cam Bissett, everything from like cross country, right through to like super technical downhill, free ride style stuff. Canterbury's really got it all and it's all in our deal step. We've got an international airport, super easy to get into, good cross training. So in terms of like road cycling up on the Port Hills with wicked views of the city, you've got surfing, out at the beaches, you've got skiing and snowboarding up at the Mount Hart, Craigieburn, Cheeseman, Broken River. Really unique stuff as well, more than just your typical piste orientated skiing. Lots of like free ride stuff up at the club fields. Absolutely ace. Yeah, Canterbury is really home to some spectacular adventure. Um, recently been voted National Geographic top eight or ten places to come visit in the world for adventure. So what we're doing is making a film at the moment because not a lot of people know this. Everyone knows Queenstown, Rotorua, but they don't know about Christchurch. 
going to be interviewing a bunch of local riders, racers, um, why they live here, why they just call Christchurch home, all the other activities they do, what they do for jobs, why do you like the mountain biking, why do you like the skiing, why do you like the surfing. Really just want to make a great documentary to showcase Christchurch Canterbury, the world. Obviously it's a, a costly adventure, we're talking colour grading, sound production, musical licensing, camera equipment, camera operators, if you know someone that would benefit, this is hotels, cafes, um, airline companies, councils, anyone in tourism really that's going to benefit from the spin-off of more visitors. Get them, get in touch with us, info at theperfectline.co.nz, hit us up there, hit us up on Facebook, just let us know, put us in touch with these people. What we need for the world to know about Christchurch as a writing destination is to get this film released. Big shout out to our sponsors for their support, big thanks to Worrells for the for the GT bikes, uh, so we've got the Force at the moment, myself and Agatha, and we've got the Furies turning up soon as well, so it's going to be pretty rad. First time on a 29er, should be interesting. Got the Giro Disciple helmet, goggles, got half face, got shorts, jerseys, gloves, um, shoes. Going to do a bit of a product review and all that sort of stuff coming up pretty shortly. Uh, really, thanks for the support guys, it makes it possible for us to make these films so that everyone else can enjoy them. So yeah, that's kind of um, the end of our first vlog. Hopefully you have learnt a little something about us, the perfect line. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, if you have, like, share, subscribe, um, and we'll see you in the future. Cheers.